Hey everybody, let's take a look at some old information and I want to connect it with new information. I'm going to start by looking at the centroid. You might recall the position of the centroid, the X position and the Y position were defined by these areas. And the centroid was kind of like the geometric center of some area. And so you integrated across the area. Now that area might be as simple as a rectangle, right? And DA, DA would be a little piece of whatever the area is. And so I've got these squares in here, and DA might be the area of that square. More often than not, though, what we would do is we would take an, a rectangular portion of the curve, and we would integrate DA then would become some Y times DX, right? This, this thickness in here would be some DX. That, y. that would be some thickness DX, and the height of that would be some value of Y. And so DA would be Y DX, okay? And then X would be the position. We'd have to find the, what's the relationship between Y and X, right? So maybe if this was a parabola, that DA would become um, Y DX. And then if it was a parabola, Y would equal X squared, right? So you have the integral of X cubed DA. Uh, dx. Anyway, so you kind of get the idea of how all of that's going to work. Uh, and then we would divide this by the integral of dA because you want the position has got to be just one dimensional. And so the dA over dA is the area over the area that that unit set or that dimension would go back to just length because you have area divided by area. And then area times length over area would be a length. So you just have some length there. All right, I digress. So the center of mass would depend on <clears throat> the dimensions and the shape, right? Or the centroid would depend on the dimensions and the shape. So if I took a larger rectangle, that would have a different centroid than the smaller rectangle, right? So the smaller rectangle, the centroid would be here, but for the larger rectangle, the centroid is there. So if I kind of did that, uh, the centroid of a larger rectangle would be where that asterisk or star is located, centroid of the smaller rectangle is in. So where the centroid is depends on the size, also depends on the shape. All right, then the center of mass, similar sort of definition, you took x bar would equal the integral of x dm, so you're integrating over the mass, and then you divide that by the mass, just like we divided over here by the area. Okay, so, uh, and again, the, the mass dm, would be related to some, some density, which I'll just call rho, right? So this is an aerial density. It's the density of the area, so mass per unit area, aerial density. And actually, I usually use the Greek letter sigma for that, but that's all right, we'll leave that alone, times dA. So this is the mass per unit area times the area. That's going to give you a mass, all right? <clears throat> so we're going to keep, keep doing this. So what we want to look at now are the concepts of moment of inertia. Now, keep in mind um, that the, the word inertia uh, was kind of, uh, I don't know if it was invented by Galileo, but Galileo was the first one to utilize it and uh, have it stick with us, I guess. Inertia is a measure of how easy it is to get something moving or to change its motion, right? It's related to mass. Uh, but in this case, moment, remember, moment is rotations, how easy it is to spin something. Uh, okay, so moments cause rotations. And so the moment of inertia is going to be a measure of how easy or difficult it is to rotate something. And this is going to depend on a couple of things. It can depend on positions in the area, just as the centroid did. All right, so I can rotate this and I can rotate this. And this one is more difficult to rotate than that one. I'll take my word for it on that. All right, uh, so it depends on the size. Right? And, and the mass of this is different than the mass of this. The big one has a larger mass than the small one. Right? So it depends on the size and it depends on uh, the shape. All right? So the other thing, though, it depends on is location. So here's a, a, an iron or steel bar, and I've got a couple of clamps on either end, and I'm rotating it. Right? I'm trying to rotate it and then change the rotation, stop it, and then reverse its rotation. And not that you can feel that, but you might be able to note from what I'm doing that that's relatively difficult to do. 
And that's with the clamps to the outside. But if I bring the clamps in, I haven't changed the mass, right? There's no alteration in the size of the mass. Uh, but if I grip it at the same location, it's easier to spin or rotate or change the rotation is really what I should say. It's easier to change the rotation when the clamps are towards that center. And so it depends not only on the mask of that, I mean, clearly that's going to be more difficult to rotate than this is, right? This ruler is very easy to rotate because it's smaller, smaller in mass. But it also depends on where the mass is located and the axis of rotation. So the way I define this, notice my integrals are somewhat different. Um, X bar had an XDA in it, but the moment of inertia about the X axis depends on the Y position, right? That's gonna depend on the Y position. So that's a little different than what we've seen already in the past. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that if I'm, if I'm rotating around the X axis, it depends on the distance from the X axis. That's gonna be the key factor. I'm rotating around the y-axis, like the y-axis up and down, it's going to depend on the distance from the y-axis, which is the x-position. All right, and in a similar fashion, we went from centroids to center of mass. In a similar fashion, we go from moment of inertia to mass moment of inertia. Now, in the physics class, we just talk about moment of inertia and mass moment of inertia, the same thing. And I often have seen the term rotational inertia. All of that really is mass moment of inertia as far as the engineering techs are concerned. But keep in mind, uh, you want to look at context because a physicist really doesn't work with this. Physicists generally work with this. And so the moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to y squared dm. Notice that denominator integral that's not there. And so the moment of inertia, uh, in this case, will have dimensions of length to the fourth power. But the mass moment inertia will have dimensions of mass times length squared. Okay, so somewhat different dimensions than what we looked at here. The other thing to keep in mind is that you have y squared here and just x or y here. So it's not a matter of just a position, but the square, the position that you're talking about squared. Okay? All right, so there's a little introduction to that, and we'll get into more detail here in another video.